and danger and you are going to escape because when when Belshazzar stayed that sensual feast and he was in his drinking party he was ignorant of these prophecies the feast was ill-timed but Babylon had been under siege and attack by the Medes and the Persians for some time while the depraved blasphemous king was insulting the almighty God who, would soon, who he would soon face in a few hours on the other side of the grave. The Medes and the Persians were behind the city was about to enter and overthrow his kingdom. His last day on earth, his last opportunity was gone. And he went into eternity unprepared. It will not happen to you. He had what is called carnal security. Carnal security. False security. He felt secured. And he felt nothing will happen. And a lot happened. He was ushered into eternity without being ready. We're going to divide the study tonight to three parts. Number one, the sensual feast and profanity of the godless. The sensual feast and profanity of the godless. Number two, the supernatural finger and the power of God. Supernatural finger of God and the power of God. Number three, the soothsayer's failure and the perplexity of the guilty. Let's come to number one. The sensual feast and profanity of the godless. We're looking at chapter 5, verse 1, all through to verse 4. And Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. How many, how many people were with him in drinking this wine? Tell me out loud. A thousand. Think about that. The place that will, that will contain those people. Just misleading those people. Wanting to do evil. Wanting to insult God. Wanting to dishonor God. And yet calling, calling all these thousands of people together. So that they can join him in his evil deed. And Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels. Which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple. Which was in Jerusalem that the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines might drink therein to drink that's bad enough to drink wine to become drunk that's bad enough and then to now take the vessels holy vessels sacred vessels or from the house of the Lord that have been taken away from Jerusalem and then to drink wine out of that and while drinking wine out of that to be praising idols, dead idols that was terrible that's what you read now in verse 3 then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver and of brass and of iron, of wood and of stones. You know something? Sinners are very careless negligent, inattentive, they are cheese when their destruction is at hand. Belshazzar knew that the Medes and the Persians were engaged in warfare against Babylon, but he belittled and disdained them. The great city was well secured, the walls were impregnable, and the mighty gates were shut in his pride and self-conceit, in his carnal false security. He disdained the enemy and he profaned the name and the worship of God. When carnal security and contempt for the God of heaven, when they unite together, they take over a man's life and then destruction and irreversible judgment will be very near. How thoughtless Nebuchadnezzar was to pitch his magnificence against God's majesty. This man committed great sin. 
a great sin, sacrilege. It was an insult against the great God of heaven and earth. He acted in the spirit of contempt and defiance against God. And God acted quickly, swiftly, bringing sword in condemnation and destruction upon him, upon his princes, upon his wives, upon his concubines, and upon the kingdom. And let us see all these things. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 22. Isaiah chapter 22. We're reading from verse 12. Isaiah 22. We're reading from verse 12. Here is what it says. And in that day, did the Lord God of us call to weeping and to mourning and to boldness and to getting of sack clothes. You see, this uh, man who was not going to real judgment in verse 13, it says, Behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating flesh and drinking wine. That's the peace itself. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. That's what we were thinking. Let's enjoy ourselves. Let's drink what we need to drink. Let's eat all we need to eat. After all, man does not continue here forever. For tomorrow we shall die. The Lord did not even give him the privilege of living till tomorrow. For tonight, Bashasa, you will die. You see, when somebody goes beyond the day of grace, and he goes beyond the period of mercy, and then does it and does it, and then he has what is called the superfluity of naughtiness. That's what James calls it. James said, This is the superfluity, the surplus, something that goes beyond overflowing evil. That he was drinking, and then he went to take the vessels of the house of the Lord and to drink from that. And with that superfluity of naughtiness and pride, swift judgment will come in verse 14. And it was revealed in my ears by the Lord of hosts. Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, says the Lord God of hosts. I pray it will not happen to you. Nahum chapter 1. Nahum chapter 1. When you came at when people go ahead and they do something like this, they disregard God, they dishonor God, they insult God, they belittle God, they disdain God. And what happens to them? We're looking at Nahum chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. In verse 10, for while they be folding together as thorns, and while they are drunken as drunkards, they shall be devoured as trouble fully dry. It says, while the wine is with them, and while they are drunken in disrespect and disregard to the Almighty God, it says they will be destroyed. In verse 11, there is one come out of thee that imagineth evil against the Lord, a wicked counselor. You see, that's what Belshazzar did. He imagined evil against the Almighty God. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 5. Habakkuk chapter 2, reading from verse 5, Ye also, because he transgresseth by wine, is a proud man, neither keepeth he at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell, and is as dead, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and he peth unto him all people. Shall not all these take up a parable against him? And a taunting proverb against him, and say woe unto him that increaseth that which is not his. How long unto him that ladeth himself with thick clay? Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee? And a wig that shall vex thee, and thou shalt be for the booties unto them in verse 8, because thou hast spoiled many nations. All the remnants of the people shall spoil thee because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land, and of the city, and of the dwelling therein. Look at verse 15. In verse 15 it says, Woe unto him that does what? Tell me out loud. Give up his neighbor drink. All those thousands of people are not thinking of drinking wine and getting drunk. 
all those thousands of people they were not thinking of insulting the almighty god and taking the vessels out of the house of that they have taken out of jerusalem and drinking out of it it was belshazzar that led them into that he said i want to dishonor the god of israel I want to dishonor the living God, the most high God. I want to dishonor the one that made his father Nebuchadnezzar mad and drove him into the forest. I want to dishonor him. And he invited all these people and gave them the wine to drink one to him. That, may, that giveth his neighbor drink, that putteth thy bottle to him, that and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also, and let thy first king be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. That's talking about the judgment that will come. But uh, let's come back to this Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5. And here we're looking at something. We're looking at verse 2. And looking at verse 3. Daniel. Chapter 5. Verses 2 and 3. And let us see something here. Let's observe. What this man did. And what is it the Lord is teaching us. That we're learning from this. Daniel chapter 5. I'm looking at verse 2. And Belshazzar while he tasted the wine. Commanded to bring the golden and the silver vessels. What did you say they should bring? Okay, remove the golden and the silver. What did you say they should bring? The vessels. The vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem. And the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines that they might drink therein. And then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the law of the house of god which was at jerusalem and the king and the princes and his wives and his concubines drank in them in short what are we going to say he did he desecrated desecrated you know to consecrate is to give something to the lord and is to make that thing pure to keep it clean and then separate and devote that and consecrate it unto the Lord. But to desecrate, that's the opposite. That means you defile it, you desecrate it, you make it dirty, and then you do something with it that is insulting to the Almighty God. I told you, I read it to you already. All these things are written for our learning. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. And what things soever were written aforetime, they were written for our admonition that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. What do I have to do? What do you have to do? What well, the vessel? And what is the vessel pointing to? And how can somebody do that today and take the vessels, understand something consecrated to God? Something devoted to God, something abandoned to God, something that is holy, separate for the service of the Lord, a vessel, and then desecrate that today. And then let's look at what the scripture actually is pointing to, ultimately when he's talking about vessel. I'm looking at I'm looking at first Kings chapter eight. First Kings chapter eight, we're looking at verse four. First Kings chapter 8, we're looking at verse 4. Here it says in verse 4, And they brought up the ark of the Lord, and the tabernacle of the congregation, and all the, was the rest? Holy vessels that were in the tabernacle, even those did the priests and the Levites bring up. Understand there's something you mark in your mind, something you underline in your Bible, something you focus on as you think about the vessels. It is holy vessel. It's only to be for holy use. Holy use, sacred use, sanctified use. Now we we'll look at First Samuel chapter 21. For Samuel chapter 21, I'm reading now from verse 3. For Samuel chapter 21, verse 3. Now therefore, 
What is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in thy, in my hand, and of what there is present. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under my hand, but there is hallowed bread, sacred bread, separated bread. And then it says, If the young men have kept themselves at least from women, if they have kept themselves holy and righteous and pure, separated, consecrated, then I can give them a special sacred bread. Verse 5, And, they, and David answered the priest, and said unto him, Of a truth, we men have not have been kept from us about these three days since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are what? Holy. What does it mean, the vessels of young men? The body of the young men. That's the vessel. That's the vessel. Now, a child of God is not the vessel. It's the holy vessel. And when you take that body of yours, and then you defile, you desecrate that body. That's like what Belshazzar did. You are not going to take something now and take an instrument in the house of God. We've gone beyond that. This is New Testament dispensation. Now, the, the vessel is your body. And when that is defiled or sin, and when that is desecrated with evil, that's exactly what Belshazzar did. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 22. Jeremiah chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 28. Jeremiah chapter 22 verse 28, the vessel, holy vessel. What did, uh, what was uh, Belshazzar thinking? Belshazzar was thinking that these uh, vessels, they don't have any honor anymore, and there's no pleasure in them anymore. They have something that, that they don't have any glory anymore. After all, my father has taken them away from Jerusalem, and they have been in Babylon all through these years. There's not anything pleasant about them anymore. Let me drink wine with them. We're looking at Jeremiah 22, verse 28. Is this man Coniah, a despised, broken idol? Is he a vessel wherein is no pleasure? A vessel wherein is no pleasure when somebody looks at a child of God and he says, This one is a vessel where of no pleasure. After all, he is not even a worker in the church. After all, he is not even doing anything significant in the church, but he's a child of God, a child of God. And then you think that that is a vessel of no pleasure. And then you do what Belshazzar did just with him or with her. And you say, I'll do whatever I want to do because she's a vessel. He is a vessel of no pleasure. That's terrible. And the judgment comes. We're looking at Hosea, Hosea chapter 8, verse 8. Hosea chapter 8, verse 8. Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. The children of Israel as a whole, that's a congregation now. That's a group of people all united together because they were carried away captive. Then the Babylonians, they said, if they were having any pleasure, if they were pleasant to the Lord, how will they be carried captive? You see, when you look at a local church, a group of the children of God, maybe they don't, they don't have a good building like this, or maybe there is you know, a particular problem, but that's the congregation of the Lord. And then you insult them, or you defile them, or you do anything to scatter them, to destroy them. And then you say, after all, it's like Israel, a vessel that has no pleasure. That's why the judgment comes upon many people. They don't understand why. I'm looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verse 15. Acts, chapter 9, verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. See that. 
Go thy way. He is a chosen vessel unto me. That's talking about Saul of Tarsus. And this is Paul. He met the Lord on the way to Damascus. And now the glory of the Lord is upon him. The Spirit of God is within him now. And then he's to carry the message of life. The message of the gospel of salvation. is to carry that to all the nations. And God said, he is a chosen vessel. If you see a person like that, and you said, I know his past life. I know what he used to do. I know what he did to the believers imprisoning them and taking them into prison and captivity. And 